Jackie's Secret. Item number, SCP-1903. Object class, Euclid. Previously safe. Special Containment Procedures. Information regarding SCP-1903 is infohazardous and must be contained as such. Detailed information is restricted to personnel with level 2-1903. 3-1903, or 4-1903 status. SCP-1903 personnel are to remain on the premises of Site 45B or Site 45C, unless either under an emergency or during the week of October 31st. Footnote: This week is considered vacation time and is necessary to reduce claustrophobia, stress, and anxiety for all SCP-1903 personnel. See Protocol-1903-G for staff substitution procedures and off-site behavior. SCP-1903 personnel are expected to perform their duties as they did while under regular employment. Recruitment or reassignment of potential SCP-1903 personnel are to be handled by non-SCP-1903 personnel. SCP-1903 personnel who do so will risk termination. New SCP-1903 personnel are to be given an uncensored copy of this document as a required reading. There must be at least 15 personnel with SCP-1903 status. Footnote: There are currently 17 personnel with SCP-1903 clearance levels. SCP-1903 is to be contained on the 9th floor of Site 45C in Secure Holding Cell 901. Secure Holding Cell 901 is to be equipped with a filtered ventilation system and standard furnishings. Communication with SCP-1903 should be restricted to physical and psychological treatment only. Staff are to observe standard toxic material handling protocols and wear appropriate hazard suits over their current clothing while handling SCP-1903. Bandages over SCP-1903's left eye should be replaced once every two days. Description Revision 1 January 4th, 1940 blank. SCP-1903 is a human female, previously known as Jackie Barter. SCP-1903 is 1.62 meters tall and wears novelty bunny ears. SCP-1903's hands and feet show abnormal pigmentation and its left eye has been removed. The subject's epidermis is currently detaching in the facial region and despite exposure of hypodermis and dermis, shows no sign of infection or blood loss, aside from several cuts around the left eye socket. The novelty bunny ears appear to be of normal composition, however, their removal appears to cause discomfort in the subject. These ears originate from SCP-1903's former place of employment, blank. Bunny ears, along with cat, fox, wolf, or rat ears, are an interchangeable piece of the uniform for female employees. Several novelty ears have been taken for testing. The sets have been placed in storage for further investigation. SCP-1903's left eye has been removed by what appears to have been a sharp object, presumably a stiletto-styled blade according to the size and shape of the wounds in the eye socket. This wound does not appear to be self-inflicted, and does not seem to be healing normally. SCP-1903 was found under the care of Nevada Blank Emergency Hospital, who were originally treating SCP-1903 for its eye injuries and later reported large parts of SCP-1903's epidermis above the jawline detaching after 92 hours of treatment. Notes taken by the N-EH reported SCP-1903's eye socket containing traces of redacted and a mercury isotope, and the wounds appearing ritualistic in nature. The redacted has been significantly contaminated by the isotope, interfering with DNA tests. SCP-1903 refuses to speak to Foundation personnel. Further investigation pending. Revision 2. February 25th, 1940 blank. SCP-1903 is a human female, previously known as Jackie Barter. SCP-1903 is 1.62 meters tall and has bleeding, claw-like hands and feet. SCP-1903 wears novelty bunny ears and has the appearance of wearing a papier-mâché styled rabbit mask, which is composed of skin cells, a plastic-like material, blood, cotton fibers, and trace amounts of mercury. This mask has grown over SCP-1903's entire face, but halts around the jawline. SCP-1903's left eye has been removed. SCP-1903's hands and feet produce blood contaminated with mercury through their pores. The mercury exposure is not lethal to SCP-1903, but has damaged its mental health significantly. 
SCP-1903's blood cell formation is higher than the average human, which is presumably how SCP-1903 is able to cope with the profuse blood loss. The reason why SCP-1903 does not experience further physical symptoms of mercury poisoning are unknown. SCP-1903's mask could be removed with a few minor lacerations where the affected area meets the subject's biological ears, but removal would either damage or remove all blood vessels, arteries, teeth, and nerve endings in the affected area. Removal would cause an extreme amount of pain in the subject, and the subject's probable death. The novelty bunny ears appear to be of normal composition, however, their removal appears to affect SCP-1903's hearing and causes minor discomfort in the subject. These ears, which were originally paired with an accompanying mask resembling a white rabbit, originated from SCP-1903's former place of employment, Blank. Blank's female uniform included a pair of novelty animal ears and a white mask. Both parts would be paired so that the wearer would resemble either a cat, fox, rabbit, wolf, or rat. Several novelty ears, with their accompanying masks, have been taken for testing. None appear to share the effect of the set given to SCP-1903, and will remain in storage until further notice. SCP-1903's original mask has been found, but has not shown any anomalous properties. SCP-1903's left eye has been removed by what appears to be a stiletto-style blade according to the size and shape of the wounds in the eye socket. This wound does not appear to be self-inflicted, and is not healing normally. SCP-1903 was found under the care of Nevada Blank Emergency Hospital, who were originally treating SCP-1903 for its eye injuries, reporting traces of Blank and trace amounts of a mercury isotope. Footnote: The mercury isotope is believed to have been placed to cover up DNA tests and possibly cause further long-lasting damage to the subject's mental health. And later reported large parts of SCP-1903's epidermis above the jawline flaking off. Upon investigation of blank, SCP-1903's former employer, Mr. A. Donner, was asked for questioning. See interview 1903-1. Mr. Donner's information led to the suspicion of A.F. Foundation investigators arrived at A.F.'s household to find that the suspect committed suicide approximately 12 hours prior to discovery. A.F. showed symptoms relating to SCP-1903, having several layers of skin above the jawline replaced by a biological mask. AF appeared to have cut his mask off with a switchblade, and removed it by prying it off with the bathroom counter. The cause of death was massive trauma, and major blood loss. Notably, AF's biological mask did not contain any traces of mercury. Additional parties showing symptoms similar to SCP-1903 are under investigation. Revision 3. February 27th, 1940 blank. Notice from the Foundation Informational Hazard Bureau. Information on SCP-1903 is temporarily expunged and pending reassignment. If you have read, or know of a co-worker who would have read the previous revisions of this document, or noticed symptoms of mercury poisoning occurring specifically around the facial area, please alert the front desk of your department's informational hazard bureau and await further instructions. Failure to do so could result in a site-wide pandemic. Currently, 20 personnel are receiving treatment. Revision 4. March 9, 1940 blank. SCP-1903 is a human female, previously known as Jackie Barter. SCP-1903 is 1.26 meters tall, has dark, claw-like hands and feet, wears novelty bunny ears, and has the appearance of wearing a papier-mâché-styled rabbit mask. SCP-1903 produces mercury and blood through the pores of its hands and feet, and its mask is composed of skin cells, a plastic-like material, blood, cotton fibers, and trace amounts of mercury. SCP-1903's left eye has been removed. Information regarding SCP-1903 is a conditional info hazard. When a subject learns of AF's name, AF's specific actions towards SCP-1903, and the nature of SCP-1903's commissions for AF prior to containment, that subject will experience symptoms similar to those affecting SCP-1903 while under containment. The subject will begin showing symptoms of mercury poisoning, and large parts of skin will flake off exclusively around the facial area two days after exposure to the trigger information. After five days, typically when the pigmentation of the affected area is a pure white in color, the dermis will begin to form a protective layer of similar composition to SCP-1903's mask, with the exclusion of any traces of mercury. 
This layer will continue to form until it covers the entire facial area, and will eventually appear to resemble a papier-mâché animal mask of a similar fashion to SCP-1903s, which typically resembles rabbits, cats, wolves, foxes, and rats. Over the course of this change, the hands and feet will undergo a pigmentation shift, darkening considerably. Their nails will sharpen, growing into claws over time, and the subject's hearing will transfer to the nearest set of novelty ears which represent the animal that their masks resemble. Once subjects have found these ears, they will show reluctance to taking them off, but this is most likely for circumstantial reasons. If a pair of ears becomes damaged to the point where repair without spare parts is impossible, the subject will become permanently deaf. Subjects have reported specific hallucinations once their mask is fully developed. See Interview-1903-2 for more information, and a reluctance to discuss SCP-1903 with those who have not already been affected, but no other changes in behavior have been noticed. When an affected subject tells a non-affected subject about the trigger information, the normal subject will undergo the changes the affected subject went through up until that point, but the affected subject's blood cell formation will begin to accelerate. Two to three days later, blood will begin to seep through the pores in the subject's hands, feet, and gums. Within a few hours, mercury will begin to appear in the subject's bloodstream. This does not physically affect the subject or other subjects in a similar state. However, it does severely affect the subject's mental health and the physical and mental health of others who are not affected similarly. Event-1903-3 On February 27, 1940 blank, SCP-1903 was discovered to harbor a slow-acting infohazard. The effects of this infohazard spread throughout the research team, two security guards, and two informants. Research assistant Jennings, the author of Revision 1 and Revision 2, experienced advanced symptoms of the infohazard, and later committed suicide via mask removal after three days of isolation. Dr. Hayward reported that SCP-1903 approached its cell's observatory window and attempted to communicate with Dr. Hayward after reading an uncensored revision too. See Interview 1903-2 for more information. SCP-1903 has been reclassified to Euclid.